Hey you guys, Happy Green Cow here again. So, this video is going to be about, um, about people asking for help with the teams. There are a lot of people at the moment out there asking for help with teams. Um, so, I grabbed one from the top of Reddit at the moment. Um, you can go just check out the um, Might and Magic Elemental Guardians Reddit. And there's a few people with just some screenies of creatures that they want sort of almost evaluated so they can find out what a good team is to help progress. So I've got that here. Here's the one that he posted up. So this is just all he's got at this stage. And um, yeah, he wanted some help finding out what he should be using progressing forward. So what creatures he should make into... 5 star and possible glyph, slip, uh, glyph, glyph help as well, but um, we'll just go into what you should choose and why you should choose it first, and we'll go from there. So, um, as for what he should choose and why he should choose it, uh, let's have a look and see what he's actually got. So, he has two nat 4s by the looks of it, he's got the... Um, He's got that goblin shaman down there, and then he's got, or is it the air, the air rocker over there? So he's got two of them. Um, they're not the best nat fours to kind of randomly progress yourself. Um, the air rocker is definitely a bit hard. Um, the goblin shaman is a lot easier to to work with. Um, what else has he got? So he's got the fire fox. Probably not the most useful fox. Uh, early on. You might be able to make use of him in the end game when you're doing TOT, however, not right now. Um, he's got the Ice Knight, which this is pretty much the end of his use. He won't be much um, much use past this stage. A lot of people like to get him in the early game because he apparently works very well. Um, he kills things very slowly, um, but he kills things. Uh, personally, I don't like him because he kills things too slowly. For my liking, I'd rather just get a DPSC thing, like for example, he's got the air rocker and um, and his earth earth goblin hexer. So I mean, you should totally use that. And you should be able to clear mobs without an issue. So you shouldn't need um to use ice knight. Um, so yeah, ice knight will be essentially fodder later on, um, unless he wants to eventually five star it just for um for giggles later on. Um, he's got water monkey. Water monkey is again like an endgame type of character. Um, if anyone's played Summoner's War, he's essentially a Galleon. Um, he decreases the defense of all the enemies, increases the attack of all, you, all your allies, and that's it. He just <laughs> he just uh, weakens and buffs, and it's really good. Um, but you need the kind of bruiser team to make use of him. So, funny enough, it's kind of what we have with the Air Rucker. Um, but considering that these are all um, four star at this stage and I'm gonna take a wild guess and say those glyphs aren't amazing either um, he's not at the right stage in the game to really utilize that uh, he'll be really good later on but for the time being no not, not super useful um, so he's got water tree probably the best healer in the game um, best healer slash buffer uh, water tree's got everything all in one um, it's got a nice heal which is a regen heal, so it's over three turns, I believe. Um, it also gives defense buff, also gives a poison mail, so that's really good. He's got uh, Water Bird, which Water Bird's amazing. Um, decreases the attack of enemies and gives your guys a shield. So he's got his damage mitigation there in his Water Bird, and he's got some uh, regen healing in the Water Trance. So he's doing really good there. He's got a healer and a damage mitigation. Um, down below he's got the Air Druid. That is, yeah, that's a Druid. Uh, Air Druid. Um, Air Druid kind of rubs up against the Water Treant because the Water Treant's heal is a regen effect, so it's a heal over time. It heals 15% over uh, ev every turn for three turns. Um, the Air Druid, I think, is something along the lines of 25% upfront. And then over the next two turns, it heals 10% 10, 10 of your health each turn. Um, so what happens in this game is 
heals over time do not stack and they don't automatically just apply the highest value so for example say if you um say if you you're an auto which you will be your water train uses his buff and all of your whole team has the 15 percent regen for three turns then the next creature to go is your air druid and she says oh your team needs healing so she heals your team 25 percent and then her 10 percent healing over two turns takes over and it overwrites the water treants heal over time and now you're left with just the 10 percent heal over two turns instead of the 15 percent over three uh every three turns i should say um so bit of an issue there however um it's all his god at the moment he doesn't have any other healers so for the time being um for the time being it'll work it's it's better than not having two healers because the ideal team that you want heading into glyph uh glyph seven eight nine and ten dungeons is two healers plus x plus x so well, plus x plus y so you want to go you want to be running one healer which your primary healer is going to be your um water treant um and your air druid so those two are going to be your healers um and your water druid is amazing oh, sorry your water uh, tree is amazing because of his poison mail that he applies to your creatures so whenever the enemy attacks your your guys um the enemy gets poisoned because he's got poison mail so really really useful it's kind of like applying damage but not directly so it's in like a defensive way which is really nice um so yeah go for those two healers and then build the rest of your team from there so i would probably advise doing those two heals as well as um water bird and then probably probably earth hexa um yeah, that'd probably be it. Um, Earth, Earth Hex is chunky enough. He's a chunky enough of a nat 4 that you can build him with a little bit of health and a little bit of damage and he won't die. Um, and that should be okay. Uh, so you've got two healers, plus uh, plus Waterbird as a mitigator, plus Earth Hex as your actual damage, I suppose. Um, and that should hopefully, hopefully push you through. Um, just trying to think. It's possible that you could just do your two healers plus Earth Hexa plus Air Raka, but I don't know. Uh, Air Raka is going to be a lot harder to build because he doesn't have much base HP, so he'll take a lot more damage. And when you're doing Glyph 10, you do take a lot of damage, so you, you either have to you have to think about how you're going to tackle uh, Glyph 10s. You either tackle it by playing the long game and shielding your guys and then giving them a whole bunch of regen buffs and then slowly slowly um, killing the enemy. Or, if you're in a position where you have a lot of bruises, like a lot of damage that you can dish out all at once, kind of like, you know, Air Rucker and um, Water Monk, so that's two, two already, which is pretty good, um, then you could possibly make a cleave, a type of cleave team. However, the issue with that is you really do need endgame glyphs for that, so you need to already be farming glyph 10 to then glyph up those creatures to be able to farm glyph 10 quicker. So essentially you want to get to a stage where you can farm glyph 10 slowly, but surely, and then from there build up your glyph inventory, and then once you have good glyphs you can then glyph these attacker creatures and make an attacker team based on that and start subbing out some monsters and seeing how it works, seeing if you can get your runtime quicker. But this healing team, this healing slash slow team, will do the job and will do it well, which is the Water Tree, uh, Air Druid plus Water Bird plus Hexa, should do it fine. Should do it okay without an issue, and it's just a matter of getting them all to 5-star, and then uh, and then slowly glyphing them up. Um, for glyphs, I'd probably recommend farming... let's have a look. It'd probably be easiest just farming, um, I think it's Sunken City, the one, the scenario that has, um, scenario that has haste glyphs. Um, just get a whole bunch of haste glyphs, um, put them all on speed and, uh, speed and HP glyphs, essentially. Um, and possibly defense due to the upcoming, um, upcoming defense rework, which is happening in three or four days or so. 
So I'd recommend um, first two slots for glyphs would be speed, always, no matter what. And then the second two slots would be HP. And then the last two slots, so slot 5 and slot 6, which are the teardrop looking slots, would probably have to be um, either defense, defense, or defense and HP. And you should be good from there. Um, and that should make your, make your units quite tanky. Um, with the Earth Hexar specifically, um, you might want to chuck on an attack glyph or two, depending on how squishy he ends up being. And that should give him a little bit of extra damage so you can um so he can he can go all out essentially. Um you can give that a go, see how it works, and if you're feeling up for it or you're feeling adventurous, you can try sub out one of your either a healer or the water bird for maybe the air rucker or the water monkey and see if you can glyph them up to live and also deal enough damage. So by that I mean the first two slots. So by first two slots I do mean I'll just quickly show you just in case. But yeah so these these first two slots, the hex hexagonal slots, um, always speed. And then these middle slots, um, if you're aiming for a damaging character like your air rocker, that's that's your air cat. Um, then you probably want to put them on you probably don't want to aim for crit rate at the moment just because it's too hard to glyph that so probably just maybe like attack attack and then HP and then defense and then see how that goes and then if you need to remove one attack uh, one attack glyph you can remove one and then add like a, a HP so you have um, HP HP defense and attack type of thing so that's kind of how you have to glyph your guys early on you can't you'll want to glyph them all attack but when you're trying to progress up the the glyph tower um, into getting to glyph 10 or glyph level 10 um, you won't be able to because things there do a lot of damage and you have to progress past past five stages so it's not just three stages it's it's five whole stages and it's um, it's it's all about consistency. You need to get that consistency. You can't just kind of have a chance of losing a guy halfway through because then it turns a four or five minute run into oh suddenly it's an eight minute run and you're just taking way too long and it's just not really efficient. So yeah, hopefully that helps you out. Um, yeah, enjoy. Thanks.